Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always, told out of voice of radio, and since we now know the full set list for Lost Origin, because it has been put on sale early in a bunch of places, and <coughs> Target, it is probably about time we sit down and take a look at the best cards from Lost Origin. So, you know, grab yourselves a nice cold beverage, find a nice comfortable seat, and join me as we count down the 20 best cards from Lost Origin. Now, one thing to point out here is there are some that didn't make the list. And I'm just going to say it's Fortin and Fantina. And I did the same thing when I counted down the top 10 from Lost Abyss, one of the Japanese sets that makes up Lost Origin. I'm doing it again now. And it is arguably a bit cheeky. Uh, sorry about that. But I'm going to be honest with you, ladies and gentlemen. This is the, the best I can do here. These cards, they have so much potential. But they're not just slam dunk, hey, pop them in. So, Fortin, as an example here. You choose a basic Pokemon in your discard pile. Switch it one of your basic Pokemon in play. Earn essentially any damage counters, special conditions, etc. on that. Stay on the new Pokemon. Sounds awesome, right? I should mention translations are from the lovely Joe over at Cerebi.net and from Justin Basil, who I believe may have taken at least some of them from the lovely Joe over at Cerebi.net. So thanks to those lovely people. So it's nice to be able to switch your basic Pokemon. There's lots of potential, but how much is it really going to be used? Similarly, Fantina can only be played if you've got 10 or more cards in the Lost Zone. And then you take 120 less damage from Pokemon V this turn. Clearly, if played at the right time, this is going to stop key KOs. So there's a decent chance these two do belong on the list. And I just didn't know what to do with them. And I'm sorry. But if you wanted to put them on the list, like, they're not making it up into the top few cards on the list. So if you want to pop them on, I shall not be upset. But in at number 20, we've got Gengar. Now, Gengar's a fun one. Because it's already been confirmed that it's got the character rare. We knew that already. And a while ago, it was confirmed that it is the pre-release promo, or at least one of them. So we've actually got an English version of this card. Now, the ability Neverworld Gate lets you put it from your bench onto your discard pile. And place three damage counters on this Pokemon. This is great if you need damage Pokemon on your bench. And there's one of them very high up on this list. It's great if you just need to fill your bench. Because you do more damage for each of your bench Pokemon, etc. It's a phenomenal ability. But then, for one energy, you put two damage counters on your opponent's active for each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. If they've got five bench Pokemon, you're dropping ten damage counters for a single energy. That is not nothing, ladies and gentlemen. That is not nothing. In at number 19, we've got Porygon 2. Now, for me personally, this is the best. Honestly, I, I love this. Porygon 2 makes me very, 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 very happy. Because Porygon 2 has got an attack which says for one energy, you deal 20 damage for each Pokemon tool in both players' Lost Zones. Remember, this is a set that brings back the Lost Zone, hence why there's so much Lost Zone shenanigans. And basically, this is just really good if you can get enough tools in your discard pile. Don't forget, we've got Toolbots coming in the set that lets you look at the top seven cards of your deck and put any tools you find into your hand. And this is just generally a very, very interesting card that could make a fantastic road deck and I love it. Speaking of interesting cards that could make a fun rogue deck, in at number 18, we've got Hisuian Gudra V-Star. Super awkward attack, cost 1 water, 1 metal, 1 colorless, but 200 damage and you take 80 less from attacks next turn. That's good. Especially when you bear in mind you're a dragon and dragons have no weakness. And then you look at the V-Star power which lets you heal all damage from this Pokemon. And we have got a potential tanky deck coming in here. I like it. In at number 17 we've got Delphox V. And this is one of those ones that I can't help but think I like more than everybody else. <laughs> and I don't even care at this stage. You see... Delphox V, what we've got here is an attack for free energy that puts two energy cards from this Pokemon into the Lost Zone, does 120 to your opponent's active and 120 to one of their bench. 
But the thing is, we've got Magma Basin that lets you attach a fire energy from your discard pile. And we've got Melanie that lets you attach a water energy and draw three cards, just as your supporter for the turn. And then all of a sudden you attach and you're using this straight away. This is a legitimate potential of a turn two or a turn one going first attack. And 120 to the active, 120 to the bench is good. I really legitimately like this, and I don't know, maybe it won't end up being as good as I think it's going to end up being, but I do think this is going to end up being a really interesting card that can jump out to some ridiculous leads. In at number 16, we've got Spiritomb, another one of the Pokemon in the set that does get itself one of those, uh, what are we talking about, character rares? That's a fun one. But it's not the character rare that gets Spiritomb onto the list. I actually, this is one of those ones I love the ability and the attack. The ability says when you're knocked out by damage from an attack, you get to search for any one card and put it into your hand. And then the attack for two Darkness Energy does 10 damage plus 60 more Freak Spiritomb in your discard pile. That, that's 190 damage for two energy, which is actually really good. So yeah. This one is absolutely on my radar. In at number 15, we've got Hisui and Electrode, although this is one of those that you can't actually look at by itself. So Hisui and Electrode V, and it is worth noting the regular art is not in the set, but the full art is, and so that makes it onto the list. Do remember the regular art has been removed to go in a promo box later. But for zero energy... You deal 100 damage for each special condition affecting this Pokemon. Yes. Because what we've also got in the set is Parasect, that when you evolve into it, leaves both active Pokemon asleep and poisoned, which is really good. And Wind Up Arm, which I'm not 100% sure that's exactly what we've got. That's what Justin Basil's got it as, and I'm going to be believing it. But that lets you attack even if you're asleep or paralyzed. So basically, you can be KOing Pokemon V and sometimes even V Star for zero energy. Yeah, that's got to make it onto the list as a very interesting Pokemon. In at number 14, we've got Aerodactyl V Star. And this is another one of those that. Could end up being a bit rubbish, but I don't care. I think it's going to be rather good. You see, what we've got here with Aerodactyl V-Star is an attack for free energy that does 240. And sure, you've got to put the top three cards of your deck in the Lost Zone, and that's awkward, and oftentimes you'll be doing that blind. Don't even care, because you're doing 240, and that's a huge amount of damage. Plus two colorless energy is good. Then for one colorless energy, your V-Star power says that as long as this Pokemon remains in play, it gains an ability with the effect your opponent's Pokemon V in play, and that does include V-Star and V-Max, have no abilities. So you can turn off a bunch of abilities at the same time. Yeah, this one is very, very good, and I like it. Now, we do have Enamorous making its debut in this set, and I like Enamorous. The ability prevents all effects of your opponent's Pokemon's abilities done to your Pokemon with Psychic Energy attached, which is honestly really, really very good. But also, it's got a really rather nice attack that does 100 damage for free energy and attaches up to two basic from your discard part of your Pokemon in any way you like. That's not the main reason I like it. The main reason I like it is for the ability, but this is still a very nice bonus attack anyway. In at number 12, we've got Drapion V, not the V-Star, the V. Honestly, Drapion V-Star, I don't want to put on my list. I don't think it's good enough. It's fine, but I don't think it's good enough. But I love Drapion V. The ability says that this Pokemon's attacks cost one colorless energy less for each of your opponent's Fusion Strike, Rapid Strike, and Single Strike Pokemon in play. And then for four colorless energy, you deal 190 damage plus 60 to one of your Pokemon. But simply, against a Mew V Max deck, you're probably attacking for free, and you're getting a very straightforward one-hit KO, and it's a basic Pokemon. And if I can counter one of the best decks in the format for zero energy with a basic Pokemon, yeah. If everybody abandons Mew, this card does not make the list, but Mew is still seeing enough play for me to want it on the list.
In at number 11, we've got Rotom V. Now, Rotom V's attack is actually really rather nice. For two energy, it does 40 damage plus 40 more for each Pokemon tool in the Lost Zone. Yes, the combo with Porygon 2 is obvious. But also, the ability says that once during your turn, you may draw three cards, and if you do, your turn ends. Well, you know what? Turn one when you're not attacking anyway? Any turn where you've just got nothing going on? Yeah. This one's really good, ladies and gentlemen. This one's gonna help some people out. Now, in at number 10, we've got ourselves Arc Phone. It's a lovely little item card. Let's look at the top card of your deck, and then you may switch one of your face down prize cards with that card. And you know what? We always end up in a situation where prizes are awkward. This lets us get a card out of our prizes using an item card, and honestly, that's a really valuable thing. In at number 9, we got Kyurem V Max. And as always with these lists, trying to figure out the exact order is super awkward. But I do believe Kyurem belongs in the top half of this list. You see, Kyurem V Max, what we've got is an ability. Once during your turn, you may discard the top card of your deck. If it's a water energy, attach it to one of your Pokemon. And you can just do this blind and cross your fingers and hope, and sometimes it'll work. But we got stuff like Oranguru that lets you swap a card in your hand with the top card of your deck, which is rather awesome. So that'll work. Or even stuff like Arc Phone, you look at the top card of your deck, oh, it's a water energy, let's do this. I really like this. This is going to be nice. The attack for free energy does 120, discards any number of water energy from this Pokemon and does 50 more for each one discarded. So if you put three on there and discard them all, you will actually do 270, which is in V Star KOing territory. But it is the, I don't get me wrong, the attack's fine, but it's the ability more so that's putting it so high on the list. In at number eight, we've got Radiant Gardevoir, and this is not for the attack. What we've got here is the ability that says your Pokemon take 20 less damage from attacks from your opponent's Pokemon V. And it really is as simple as that. You take 20 less damage, but you know what? Taking 20 less damage is really good. And maybe there are still going to be a bunch of decks out there that just want to play Greninja for the draw power. And that's absolutely fine. Or some other Radiant Pokemon. Because they're one per deck, remember. But if you don't know what Radiant or which Radiant Pokemon to play, this is a really, really good option. Now, in at number 7, from a playability standpoint, my favourite card in the set. We are finally getting Hisuian Arcanine. I have been waiting for this card. This card is awesome. And what we've got here is zero energy, 10 damage. If you've got no cards in hand, you deal 160. But you're also a fighting type Pokemon, which is a really good weakness. And we got awesome Kato artwork. I am all in on this card. I am going to play an obscene amount of this card. Obviously, it's a stage one. And anytime we've got a stage one nowadays, we need to mention we've got that really good combo with Zoroark. And being able to switch around your stage ones. But 160 for no energy, hitting a good weakness on a single prize Pokemon is, for me, absolutely nuts. And this is a good time for me to mention we are finally getting the Greedent, which should have been in the previous set. The one that for two energy lets you do your 60 damage, and you've got to discard your hand. But if you discarded five or more cards, you deal 210 for two energy on a single prize Pokemon. I love this Greedent, ladies and gentlemen. This Greedent makes me happy. And this Arcanine makes me happy. You better believe I'm going to be mucking around with stage one lists like this as we get through next year. In at number six, we've got Volo. And I know not everyone agrees with me on this one, but I really do think Volo is a card which is going to absolutely change games. Because what you do is discard one of your bench Pokemon V and all attached cards. And this could be just clearing bench space. But a lot of the time, what this is going to do is take away that option from your opponent. If my opponent gusts up this damaged Pokemon, or my only free prize, or my only two prize Pokemon, whatever it might be. If they do that, I lose the game. Well, Volo means they can't do that. And then you don't lose the game. And if you don't lose the game, you win the game. And winning is very much the aim. In at number 5, we've got Hisuian Zoroark V-Star, and this one's confusing to me. This was a poster child for Dark Phantasma. 
So in theory, this should be a phenomenal card. Had a lot of hype coming in. And it seems like it's going to be a really good card. But it's not had quite the results over in Japan I was expecting. Don't get me wrong. It's been seen around the top tables plenty. But it's not seen quite as much as I would have expected. But there's still a ridiculous amount of potential here. Because for two energy, you deal 50 damage for each of your Pokemon with any damage counters on. Plus, you got a V-Star power that lets you discard your hand and draw seven cards, which is crazy useful for mid-game consistency. Don't forget the Gengar I mentioned that can go straight from your discard pile to your bench with damage counters on. That's going to be pretty gosh darn useful. And there is actually an item card we need to mention here as well, which I want to say it's Damage Pump. Let's you move up to two damage counters from one of your Pokemon to your other Pokemon in any way you like. Which is obviously going to be super useful to make sure all your Pokemon are damaged and Zoroark can do the maximum amount of damage. In at number four, we've got Sableye. And Sableye is another one of those which has the potential to be like absolutely full on broken. Because Sableye, for one Psychic Energy, now you do have to have 10 cards in your Lost Zone, at least. But you place 12 damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon in any way you like. Against an Evolution deck, that's potentially getting two unevolved Pokemon. Or you can just get Pokemon in range of being KO'd. Or you can just KO Pokemon that are weaker. For one energy on a single prize Pokemon, this is absolutely flat out ridiculous. I love this. In at number three, and we are very much into the top. I'll be honest with you, Lost Abyss is Lost Abyss is winning the top of this list. Sorry. In at number three, we got Comfy. Once during your turn, if it's active, look at the top two cards of your deck. Put one in your hand and one in the Lost Zone. And sure, there are going to be times you use this and you get two cards that you really want in the Lost Zone. Sorry. But, you know, other than that, this is awesome. It's great just for draw power. It's great if you want to get cards in the Lost Zone, except for those inevitable games where there's two cards, neither of which you want in the Lost Zone, hey-ho. And this is just going to be good draw on a basic Pokemon. Now, in at number two, a card I probably could have put at number one, it's Mirage Gate. And when I looked at Lost Abyss, I put this in with Giratina. I don't think that's fair, so I'm giving it its own spot at number two. You do need to have seven or more cards in the Lost Zone, but with stuff like Comfy, with Chorus I'm going to show you in a minute, and all kinds of other things, it ain't that difficult. You search your deck for two basic energy cards of different types and attach them to your Pokemon in any way you like. It's ridiculous. Accelerating two energy with an item card is just broken. And any deck that can take advantage of Mirage Gate is going to have a huge advantage over any deck that can't. Mirage Gate is absolutely busted. But in at number one, I'm putting Giratina. And I really do believe Giratina is the best card in the set. Giratina V-Star is crazy. For free energy, you do 280 damage. Which is just, you don't need any modifiers, this just KOs Pokemon V-Star. And sure, you need to put two energy attached to your Pokemon in the Lost Zone. Nobody cares, you got Mirage Gate. And then your V-Star power is Star Requiem. If you've got ten or more cards in the Lost Zone, no mucking about, instant KO, it's ridiculous. I do think we need to mention Chorus' experiment here. That's a supporter card that lets you look at the top five cards of your deck. Three go in your hand, two go in the Lost Zone. I'm not giving this its own space. It really is a card for when you want to aggressively go after the Lost Zone. And obviously Sableye is going to be ridiculous in this deck. And Comfy is going to be ridiculous in this deck. I do think Sableye and Comfy can live on their own. So can Mirage Gate. But all of those cards just make Giratina so good. It's almost a little bit unfair. And I do expect Giratina to start wrecking the post-world metagame. But I want to hear from you guys, ladies and gentlemen. There's my top 10, but I want to know what you think. I want to know your top 10, so let me know in the comment section, would you? Go nuts! Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk Pokemon, Pokemon cards, other card games, other Pokemon games, all kinds of fun things. And you can join a Discord and chat Pokemon with us over on patreon.com slash PTCG Radio. Get weekly bonus pods where I answer all your questions and talk about what you want me to talk about. And I give shout outs to people like the lovely Mike. 
Thank you for being a supporter, Mike. Mike's a lovely person who supports the channel. Thank you for supporting. Thank you for being a lovely person. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.